Hi, my name is Cammie and this is Classics and Cats. Okay, so today is all about movies I bought in March of 2021. So this is a movie haul, classic movie haul of course. And I just, I kept looking for specific movies on like Amazon Prime, Netflix, Hulu, you name it, streaming services, YouTube, and some of them I just couldn't find. And I was like, you know what, I want to have a copy of them on hand, I'm tired of waiting around for these people to know what good movies are. So I just went ahead and purchased a few. So I would like to share those with you. And I think all of them I have seen except for two. So let's get into it. So the first one I got is Miss Annie Rooney, and this one has Shirley Temple in it, a teenage Shirley Temple. I think she was a young teen. Um, it also has William Gargan, Guy Kibbe, Dickie Moore, Peggy Ryan, Roland Dupree, and June Lockhart. So um, I'm trying to think. So it's been a while since I've seen this one. I saw this one a few years ago, and I've only seen it once. I think I had it on VHS, and now I've upgraded to a Blu-ray, so <laughs> pretty fancy. But this one is a cute story. Um, I'll read the description, okay? Because they're going to be so much better. It's spring in the Rooney household, and starry-eyed Annie dreams of blossoming love. Her father dreams of something more tangible, to be parked on Easy Street. But in their working-class Irish neighborhood, the odds are against them both. Shirley Temple stars in the title role of Miss Annie Rooney and displays all the endearing charms that made her America's little sweetheart. Along the way, Annie jitterbugs a path straight into the heart of Marty, who's our gang's uh, Dickie Moore, who may fulfill the hopes of both Annie and her father. So it says it's co-starring William Gargan and Shirley Temple's Captain January co-star Guy Kibbe, and featuring Peggy Ryan, Roland Dupree, and June Lockhart. Miss Annie Rooney is a fun, heartwarming treat that all Shirley Temple fans will enjoy. So what I remember from this film is that her father wants to be an inventor, I believe, and he has this great idea and um, I think she has a birthday party or something and invites all these people over and I don't know if his idea flops or he gets bad news or you know that he tries to show them his invention and it doesn't work I forget what happens I need to watch it again but you know I think it's one of those where you know her birthday party just doesn't go according to plan and it's so sad and um, yeah but it's it's a Shirley Temple if you're a Shirley Temple fan you're gonna love it so yes, this one was very cute from what I remember, but I wanted to have my own copy. And I don't think, so my whole family, we're all Shirley Temple fans, but I'm not sure that my mom and my brother have seen this one. So we'll have to get together and watch this one soon. And then let's just go ahead and do my next Shirley Temple. I also got another Shirley Temple called Kathleen. And this one also has Herbert Marshall, Lorraine Day, Gail Patrick, and Felix Brassard. So this one I had seen before a long time ago, several years ago, but I watched this one as soon as I got it. Um, I watched it with my mom and my brother. They both came over to watch this with me. And it was so cute, just like I remembered. So the premise of this is that uh, Shirley Temple's character, uh, Kathleen, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shirley Temple's mother has passed away in this film, and her dad is always busy with work, and she doesn't really see him much, so she's left to the care of her nanny, who's a horrible, vindictive woman, and they're just always at odds, and they make each other's lives miserable, and she just wishes her dad would spend more time with her and be at home, and maybe find a wife, and they could just be a happy little family. So, um... Once she starts to envision this, oh, and something that's so cute about this film, it reminded me so much. This is like the Shirley Temple version of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. She just goes into daydream scenarios, like with her dad and like a woman, and it's so cute. Like she has all these visions, and um, it's just adorable. That's what it reminded me, though, of as soon as like that happened, as soon as it went into the dream effect, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the Shirley Temple's uh, Walter Mitty. So it was adorable. But anyway, so he brings home a woman out of the blue who he's falling for, and Kathleen is just not impressed with this woman. She doesn't like her. She doesn't think she's mom material, and, um, you know, she just doesn't get the warm and fuzzies. So during this process, this woman is like, maybe she needs to see a psychologist. So they call this psychologist in, who happens to be a beautiful young woman, and Shirley loves her, or Kathleen loves her, 
and wants her to be the mom. So she's trying to push her and her dad together. And this other woman's getting in the way. And it's just adorable. It's Shirley Temple sweetness all the way. So if you haven't seen this, I highly recommend Kathleen. Okay, and then the next one I got, I wanted a copy of An Imitation of Life. And this one was a double feature. It has two different versions. So one is an older version, which has Claudette, Cla Claudette Colbert. And the newer one, newer, 50s, um, has Lana Turner. So I'm not sure if it has the dates on these. Let's see. So the one with um, Claudette Colbert is in black and white um, from 1934. And then um, the one with Lana Turner is in color, and it was in 1959. So this is a really important film, and I saw it years and years and years ago. I don't even remember a whole lot about it, except that Sandra D has a very minor role in this, and I really loved Sandra D. So really, I think that's the reason I watched it. But it's a much more, it's a much bigger film than that. But I didn't realize that as a teenager. Um, so I'll read the description and see if this does it any justice. Imitation of Life, one of the most beloved and respected stories of all time, is now available in a new two-movie special edition based on the 1933 best-selling novel. This emotionally charged drama chronicles the lives of two widows and their troubled daughters as they struggle to find true happiness in a world plagued by racism. So this is uh, an amazing film. It will probably bring you to tears. It's going to break your heart. I have not seen the Claudette I'm going to get this. This is so hard. Why does she have so many C's and L's and O's all, all mixed up? Claudette Colbert version. I have not seen the black and white one. I've seen the Lana Turner, like I said, because it has Sandra D as her daughter, so it's a minor role. Um, but the actresses in that film uh, were amazing. Let's see who was in that one with her. Lana Turner, John Gavin with Sandra D, Dan O'Herlihy, Susan Conner, and Robert Alda with Juanita Moore and Mahalia Jackson. So, ooh, Mahalia Jackson singing Trouble of the World. Lovely. So um, that film I did watch, and I would really like to see the black and white version and then com compare the two. So I will probably have that in an upcoming, like what movies I watched for the month, and I'll compare the two versions for you. So that's an excellent film. All right. And then I have another double feature that I purchased. So actually on this one, I just wanted the portrait in black. So it has um, Sandra D, which again, she has a minor role in this film, but I was trying to watch all of the Sandra D films because uh, I would like to do an actress spotlight, um, actresses you should know, and have Sandra D be one of them. I did one for Deanna Durbin, and I would like to do one for Sandra D as well, and several of other actresses, but I wanted her to be my next one. So I wanted to see as many of her films as I could. I've seen a lot of them, especially, especially the more popular ones, but Portrait in Black I had never seen, so I wanted to watch that one. Again, she plays a very minor role, so I wouldn't consider it really important um, as, as a Sandra D film. But um, it was an excellent film anyway. So this one also has Lana Turner, Anthony Quinn, Sandra Dee, and John Saxon. So in this film, it's uh, a rich millionaire, billionaire um, guy. His wife, much younger, beautiful wife, Lana Turner, um, he is very sick. He's very ill. He's running this major corporation. He doesn't trust anyone to take it over for him. And he's hanging on by a thread. So the only people that really have contact with him, because he's bedridden, so he's running this business from his bed. So the only people really in his life are his daughter, which is Sandra D. So um, Lana Turner's her stepmother. So his daughter, um, his doctor, uh, his wife, and um, the guy that kind of, his kind of co-pilot for running the, the business. And I think it's like a shipping industry business. So he like watches over the, the waterways and uh, monitors his um, shipments on watercraft. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so then suddenly he dies and it's a who doesn't, who done it? Who had the most to gain from this? Would it be his daughter, his wife? Um, could it be the doctor? Could it be um, the guy that uh, runs the company for him? Who knows? So that one was really good. I really liked that one. Um, I can read the description and see if they, they'll definitely say it better than I did. Portrait in Black. They say money can't buy happiness, but can it murder? Lana Turner and Anthony Quinn star as an adulterous couple who conspire to kill her tyrannical husband. Soon after the murder, the lovers in crime receive an anonymous letter that says, 
Dear Mrs. Cab Cabot, Congratulations on the success of your murder. <laughs> With this alarming complication, their new life together begins unraveling as they become trapped in the realization that someone, somewhere, knows their dark secret. So I guess they told you more. I was trying to keep spoilers out, but they kind of, they kind of told you a little bit. So that was Portrait in Black. I did watch that, and I really liked it. And then the second feature on here is Lana Turner again in Madam X. And I have not watched that film yet, but I probably will. Um, I'll read the back to you because I have no idea what this one is about. It just happened to be attached to Portrait Black. So Lana Turner plays one of the best roles of her career in the stunning and emotional adaptation of Alexander Bisson's classic play. Turner is the ill-fated Holly Anderson blackmailed by her evil mother-in-law into leaving her politician husband and their baby. 20 years later, she finds herself on trial for murder where she is defended by her own son. Aww. I don't know if I should say all to that, but that sounds cool. So I'd really like to watch that one as well. And then my last film that I bought for April, that I bought for March, is Elizabeth Taylor in Cynthia. So Elizabeth Taylor is probably definitely going to be another one of my actresses that I spotlight. Um, I'm trying to watch a lot of her films as well. Um, but Cynthia, I feel like, is a lesser known um film. I think she's pretty young in this. I think she was probably 14 or 15 when she made this film. Um, but this was so cute. I think I happened to see it on TCM one night, you know, just happenstance. And um, I really enjoyed it. It was a really cool story. Um, so it's, I'll just read the back. I, I'm so terrible with descriptions. Okay. So with Cynthia, Elizabeth Taylor left the film world of dogs, horses, and childhood to play a lovely miss on the brink of womanhood and put herself on the brink of a remarkable career as one of Hollywood's great beauties and stars. Taylor plays the title character, a physically frail 15-year-old who uses her musical gifts to break free of her protective parents and then begins to enjoy typical teenage fun and romance. With a suitor played by James Lydon of the long-running Henry Aldrich series, who also rude Taylor in the same year, Life with Father. Oh, that was a cute movie, too. The outstanding supporting cast includes Mary Astor, George Murphy, and S.Z. Sackle. But it's a radiant Taylor who forever makes Cynthia a dream to remember, or a girl to remember. Just added in dream. Um, so yeah, it's about um, her overprotective parents. She's a sickly girl, and it's about her um, coming of age, I guess, and trying to exert her independence and, you know, maybe not be so frail. But I, and you know, now that I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember the ending of this movie. Like, was it sad? Was it happy? Now I gotta watch it again. All right. So, but that I, I again, I wanted this one in my collection permanently, so I didn't have to depend on streaming services for it. I'm anti-technology. I think they're going to take all of our awesome movies away, and I don't want that to happen. I just read Fahrenheit 451, so so I don't trust anyone. I want my own copies. So yeah, so I got a copy of Cynthia to keep in my collection. So those are all the films that I got for March of 2021, and I can't wait to watch them. And um, the ones that I haven't seen, I'll share updates with you and let you know how they were. Um, again, I would like to do an actress spotlight and um, go through the films with like Sandra D and Elizabeth Taylor and other actresses and kind of talk about which ones are my favorite and why and which ones I recommend and why. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to share my, I did my book haul, now I got to do my film haul. So we're all caught up in what I spent my hard earned money on in March of 2021. So I hope you are all well and I hope I see you very soon. And take care. Remember, always be kind to yourself as well as others and always be kind to cats. Thanks. Bye.